Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today, this is a rather simple tutorial to make this Voronoi cell setup using volume grid. I was inspired by a Houdini tutorial, but uh, this isn't something very difficult. Technically, you could achieve this effect using 5.0, but we are going to discuss the differences between achieving it before and after 5.0, and some interesting findings about certain node usages. Presets are free from the link in the description. Tutorials and renders are available for monthly subscribers. Before 5.0, we had the limited support for volume. Simply put, the only way you could map a texture onto a volume was by using the volume cube node, which contains a diamond field socket, meaning you can map your texture onto the volume. In other old volume nodes, such as mesh to volume or points to volume node, you can see they don't have this socket especially for their density, meaning the density is strictly fixed to a constant value. If you output your distance to these sockets, it will throw an arrow. On the opposite, you can throw this value to volume cube node without any problem. And with volume to match, it will show the fractured pieces more properly. As the node name implies, by default it works for a cube. And for it to work on objects such as Suzanne, you need some extra evaluation to include or exclude volume, like this is inside the volume presets. I've discussed those before, so I don't want to repeat them. The rest are mostly parameter issues. For example, I need to enlarge the boundary box, increase the resolution, use a greater than to close the gaps between pieces, and use a smooth position to make it less blocky. You will notice it becomes much better, but will also slow down your computer. The volume cube node is like a giant node group that includes the functions we are going to break down. For our specific effect, since the volume cube encloses all the functions inside it, for our setup, you may need to duplicate another volume cube or still have to use the get named grid function on top of this existing chaos, trying to open it up. It raises performance concerns because you probably don't want to duplicate this heavy function. As a result, let's try the new workflow using volume grid. So let's go to a new node tree. We're going to do everything from scratch. Let's lock the node tree and I already have a subdivided Suzanne. We pull Suzanne into the node tree and convert the mesh to a density grid. Let's increase the density to 15 for visualization. You realize our Suzanne has no ears. There are two things I will do. One is normal displacement. You can see our Suzanne has been expanded a little and so is their volume. The second is to decrease the voxel size. I will put up a value position. By default, it's outputting 0 0.1. So now, with these two combos, we have the ears showing up. We can tweak values further later, so for now, let's move on. Now we can start to use the Voronoi texture. Let's turn the Voronoi texture to distance to edge mode. And we need to map this distance to the volume we have. The node is called a field to grid. We input our volume topology and we input our texture. Then we get a new volume that we can visualize. It's a bit too faint, so let's add a mass multiply, turning it to 15 times. And this is for visualization only. In the viewer, you can see it looks different from what we previously have. Basically, there's some other regions coming up to be whitish. To solve this, it turns out to be the reason I had to make this tutorial so that uh, more people could learn this kind of trick. We need to set the grid background to zero. Now you can see the background has been cleared and the Voronoi texture is only influencing the part where Suzanne was in place. This kind of information was actually also visible in the original volume cube node. The only difference is that here you need to set more explicitly, otherwise you will be in trouble. 
Our volume right now looks a bit cloudy. This is because the frequency of defaults for noise texture is too high. So let's decrease it a bit to two. We no longer need this visualization because we can turn this volume grid to mesh to see it better. And we need a smooth position to smooth it. We also need to turn down the box of size further to make it more accurate. So now I'm putting it like 0 0.02. We can go back to our grid to mesh now. It's important to check this threshold. As you can probably imagine, it asks how much density you are going to convert from volume into an actual mesh. Since this is a very small value, I will use value precision. You see, as I'm decreasing the value, the gap becomes smaller and smaller. This also leads to another perspective. Instead of directly using these thresholds, you can use a greater than mass on your existing grid before it's fed into set grid background. The reason I do this is because it makes it easier to find the other parts of area as we can just invert our volume using boolean mass knot so you can see this cutting volume let's duplicate our grid to mesh to see how it looks and the joint geometry before smooth position we can output our products now for coloring we can use the same voronoi texture you need to change the mode to expose its color socket and we can compare it if we actually have a distinctive color for each island. It seems to work great. So I store named attributes, name it C for color. We need to duplicate it for the other parts. I will mark it as black for this tutorial. Let's add a set material node, add a material and a pick it. In the shader editor, let's call our attribute C. So this setup is done. If you want to evolve it, it's easier if you enable 4D for your texture, where you can see the W for evolution. Let's drive it using value precision. You see, sometimes our cutting lines disappear. This is because we need a separate set of grid backgrounds to it as well. So basically, this is the setup for today's tutorial. We have a quite a nice geometry and the performance is yet in an acceptable range, about 150 milliseconds on my system. If you have time and interest, you can try the old workflow using Volume Cube. As I mentioned earlier, I duplicated a Volume Cube for this specific setup. The rest of the setup, you may find some similarities, as we have Voronoi texture, greater than, and a knot, volume mesh, smooth position, and so on and so forth. However, the result is surprisingly bad for Suzanne if you pay attention to the nose. And I've already put the resolution high enough and the performance is about two times to what we have. Perhaps this could be done better in older workflow, but I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.